So pressure on the Greek Prime Minister on the eve of a confidence vote that could bring down his government. Does the opposition have a better plan to save Greece from default? Well, our next guest should be able to tell us because he's Notis Mitarachi, alternate head of economic policy for the opposition New Democracy Party, joins me in the studio now. Good to see you. Welcome Thank to the you Pulse. For the invitation. Sure. So, Eurozone finance ministers have pledged to pay uh, the next tranche of, tranche of Greece's original bailout, of course, 12 billion euros in early July, if the Greek parliament delivers on budget cuts. Are you willing to support the austerity package in order to get this money? We were first to argue the need for a balanced budget. We were first to argue the need for an aggressive privatization program and cost cutting in the public sector. The program we're implementing, however, is focused more in tax hikes at the time of economic recession, a strategy that has proved completely inefficient. So we argue that we need to balance now the, the need to restart the economy with fiscal and structural changes alongside much needed, I would agree, cost cutting in the public sector and privatizations. So in essence, we agree with the objectives of the program, but we disagree on the policy mix the way it's implemented. And to be fair, if you look at the results today, the deficit is up 14% in the first five months of 2011, year on year, despite draconian measures that the Greek population had to suffer. So basically, you're not going to support these austerity measures. You're not going to put, get behind this package in its current form, is what you're saying? We have been behind specific measures and we have voted half of the bills that the government has suggested in the last 12 months. The overall mix, we don't think it's going to be efficient. We don't think it's going to achieve the goals that we all need, want and need to have. But right now, it seems as though we're reaching a critical point because the country, the government, is running out of time. It's not going to be able to pay its bills. It's not going to be able to meet bond obligations, bond maturities, which are coming up in July. That means you're going to run out of money, and that means default. I respect this argument. A year ago, we had exactly the same argumentation where the first memorandum was proposed. We said no to the first memorandum because it was not actually cutting the deficit. It was not actually cutting the debt and it was creating issues at social cohesion and a year later because the government hasn't met its objectives we're having this discussion again and we're seeing the concern the right concern from the eurozone members saying the program is not working we have the same argument we say the program is not working let's sit down and find a program that can achieve the needed goals but right now there is a time issue is there not that if you don't get behind this package now Eurozone finance ministers, just this morning we had ECB member Lorenzo Binismaghi saying, listen, no more money, no more loans. If these budget cuts are rejected, that means the responsibility for this lies firmly on your shoulders. By rejecting this package, you're endorsing default. The government is responsible for governing the country and they have the majority in parliament to pass the measures. The objective of and the opposition is to have to make constructive criticism and that's what we're doing. What is critical is for all of us to agree on the goals and that's also what the Eurogroup said yesterday. It's critical that we agree on the goals and we agree on the goals. Okay, so then what specifically within the package do you disagree with? Is it the asset sales? No, that's exactly, that's our proposal. We're in favor of asset sales. We're in favor of a cost cutting. We disagree on a program that 50% of the adjustment comes from revenues. At, an, at a country which has a very big tax evasion problem. So what we're doing, we're taxing more the honest people and we're doing nothing to find those that tax evade. And that we need a balance. And this balance is missing. And therefore, if you look at the numbers again, state revenues are down 8% in the first five months but of the year. It, but isn't that all the more reason then to be collecting more in taxes right now? You need to collect less taxes from the from the business sector because we are, you are seeing disinvestment, you are seeing companies redomiciling out of Greece into neighboring countries, and if you don't have new investments, unemployment has reached 16%, and unemployment 16% doesn't have only social implication, it has considerable fiscal implication, because when people don't work, they can't get taxed, they don't spend, so, they actually have to pay unemployment benefits to them. So it sounds like you want reform of the tax system. We want to reform the tax but system the, and we've been specific to that. But, we but suggested the, a specific, made a specific but proposal. But the new finance minister has pledged to focus uh, on things like tax evasion, to reform the tax system, essentially, right? But this is not part of the program the parliament is discussing today. But he's pledged to do this. Uh, the government has made many pledges. I'm looking at results, I'm looking at specific laws. We need to be specific at the time of crisis, not make general wishes. And a point on consent the government made a proposal last week for a unity government. We accepted the offer. The Prime Minister, six hours later, withdrew his own offer. So Nea Democratia agreed to be on a unity government. The Prime Minister made the proposal. We said yes. Six hours later, 
he changed his mind because of pressures from his hardline and his parties. I, I think where the problem is, is within the governing party, that they don't have consensus within the government. So you're not going to get behind the austerity package? We will support it, those measures that are good for the economy. It will be irresponsible on our part to support the total package if we think it's not going to achieve the goals. And you, to be fair, if you look at the, our criticism in the first 12 months, we have been right up to now, and that gives us the right to keep on constructively. We're not blocking the implementation of the program. We haven't gone to the streets. And, but, but you are blocking the implementation of the program no. because right now Eurozone Finance Minister is saying, listen, you've made no progress on bringing down your deficit. You've made no progress on asset sales, on even setting a deadline for selling your the assets. The original program had no provision for asset sales. And that's one of the reasons we voted no in May 2010. The original program said nothing about privatization. We came first in July 2010 and said, if you don't include privatization in the program, that will reduce your chances of re-entering the markets. Twelve months later, the set objective of re-entering the market in 2012 has now disappeared. So, uh, Mr. Mitarachi, it sounds like you're, you're saying you're not totally against privatization on, no, on the assets. You're not, you're not against those. It's but you want, you want specific. You want specifics when it comes to tax reform, and you're not getting them. From what you're saying, you're not going to get behind the austerity package. Uh, that could mean that, that Greece, A, doesn't get the, the fifth tranche of its original bailout, and no second bailout will be agreed either. What happens, what Let, happens after that? Let's summarize the position. We said yes to privatization. We, we said yes to cost cutting. We said yes to the objective of the program. But if we don't reform structurally the markets and we don't reform the fiscal system, if we don't liberalize the economy, we will not be able to reduce the deficit. One year down the road, we're not reducing the deficit. What we need to do is sit back and see why, what is not working and change what is not working. The government is doing the contrary, is doing more of the same. But if the government can't implement the austerity package, then they're not going to be able to actually meet those goals, right? But the, but, the but government has been more, there for... More, more urgently right now, they're not, it doesn't look like they're going to get any money from the EU and the IMF. What, what happens But in the that government situation? has been there for 18 months and they have a plan in place which is not producing results. The question you need to ask is why it's not working. We are saying that from the very beginning, in their effort to reduce the deficit, they created a deeper than anticipated depression, they took no measure to liberalize the economy, they took no measure to privatize markets, and therefore... But they're trying to do that now. And these specific measures we will support. But we're, we cannot support a further uh, uh, policy mix exactly in line with the first policy mix, which has not produced the needed results. Just a quick final question, Mr. Mitrachi. What do you want to see from the EU at this point? We, we very much appreciate, of course, the support of the Eurozone. We want a plan that can work. And a plan that can work is one that balances restart of the economy, structural changes, fiscal change, alongside much needed cost cutting in the public sector and privatization. A more liberal plan. Okay, Mr. Notis Mitarachi, alternate head of economic policy, uh, Greek opposition, New Democracy Party, of course, the biggest opposition party in Greece. Wonderful to have you in Thank the studio. So Thank you for sharing your views with us.